Coach, let's talk about Nebraska's schedule. This was their original schedule. They were going to open up against Purdue. They were going to play Central Michigan, South Dakota State, and then they were going to play Cincinnati. Then we had the 10-game schedule that obviously we're not using. Now we're back to uh, a nine-game schedule. And, and here, here's their schedule as it stands right now. Ohio State, Wisconsin, Northwestern, and Penn State. Are there any adjustments that Scott Frost and the Nebraska staff can make with that kind of schedule as opposed to non-conference games and then getting into the conference? A quick story, real quick. Uh, Earl Bruce gets hired at the University of Tampa as a head coach. He's going to go visit with Bear Bryant, the legendary coach at Alabama. It's really hard to get this visit set up, and he finally does. Here's a young Earl Bruce, first-time head coach, walks in, sits at the a chair in front of Bear Bryant's desk and said, how can I help you, boy? And R Earl Bruce says, well, coach, I just, you're, you're the most successful coach in college football. I'm just starting my career. Any advice for me? You see, I got three pieces of advice. Write this down, boy. Number one, scheduling is very important. Get control of your scheduling. So Earl Bruce writes it down. He goes, number two, scheduling is very important. Get a hold of your scheduling. And number three, make sure you have control of your schedule. Uh, so that was Bear Bryant's advice. Uh, Scott Frost did not listen to that. This is an awful schedule. This is hard. I didn't realize it until me and you were talking earlier. Year three, trying to build your program. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of Nebraska. I'm a fan of Scott Frost. And, you know, I, I hope they can. I hope they can survive that. How do you – your question was, how do you adapt? I don't know. I don't know. You got to one game at a time, try to win another game, get your guys healthy and go again. But three of those top four teams, I, I don't know. I, I think that's uh, – those are potentially top 15 opponents. Yeah, and you mentioned third year. To me, that, that makes it even – more difficult that that this is a year I think Nebraska really felt like they could make strides. I got I got a question. I I got a question for you, Jerry. Is that I remember when Scott Frost first entered the Big Ten, the it came up. You know why why? And I remember Scott Frost. I was sitting there and I thought schedules are always random. I thought there's no control over scheduling. You just get in a rotation, and it always seemed like Nebraska plays Ohio State either Penn State or the Wolverines from the East of the crossover games. And I've never quite, maybe you understand that. I, I've never really, I was waiting for an answer, but why does Nebraska always play the toughest schedule? Yeah, I, I think the, the, the thought behind that is when Nebraska came in to the conference, they wanted a, what they call a semi-permanent crossover. And the, the brand name Nebraska, everyone excited that they were coming in to the conference. I just think the conference felt like if we match them up with another big brand and we make them play six years in a row, that that could benefit the conference. I, I think money, I think TV is always part of those type of decisions. But having said all that, the fact that Nebraska is not coming out of a normal camp, not having a normal non-conference schedule before the conference schedule, although they were gonna, they were gonna open up with a conference game, what about scrimmaging? That's the first thing I thought when I saw this, that where COVID meets this very difficult schedule for Nebraska. How do you deal with scrimmages? I, I don't know their program. You know, I know this is year three. I know they've struggled. I know they've recruited hard and they have a good staff. I picked them to compete last year in the West and they did not. They, they had a, not a very good year. Jerry, it's all about, you know this as well as I do, this is about health. And when you get to the dance, you want to have your best players, but they have to be fundamentally sound in blocking and tackling and ball security. And those three, that's all to me about contact at this point. How do you, how do, you do that? I, you know, if I have a, a young team, you have to have contact. If, if someone sprains an ankle, God forbid, or something happens, you know, that's part of the game. But, I mean, you have zero room for error. And then plus, playing a team that's really good that's not physical – to me, that's a whole different animal. I mean, you can, you know, the Sunday training room, you're fine. But you play Wisconsin, they're going to bloody your nose. Ohio State's going to bloody your nose, and so is Penn State. Those are physical, physical teams. And, and Northwestern, I mean, has been known to be physical too. So, I, I mean, my gosh, Jerry, when, you, when I sat and looked at that schedule and I'm trying to build my team in year three, I don't want to say there's no chance, but he, that, that, they are running uphill on this one. Yeah, I go as far as to say this may be the toughest schedule anyone's ever had going into the third year of the program. Appreciate your thoughts, Coach. Thanks.
Thank you, Jerry.